Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. This video will be about hyperkalemia under electrolyte imbalances. Well, before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel. Let's get into the session. As we all know, normal serum potassium level is 3.5 to 5 milli equivalent per liter. Hyperkalemia is a condition that occurs when the serum potassium concentration goes more than 5 milli equivalent per liter. Now, let's look on what is potassium and what does it do in our body. Potassium is both an electrolyte and a mineral as well. It is the main intracellular fluid cation. It controls ICF osmolality and osmotic pressure. Potassium also regulates cell excitability. It is a major intracellular electrolyte and in fact 98% of the body's potassium is inside the cell and only the remaining 2% is found in the extracellular fluid. Potassium influences both skeletal and cardiac muscle activity. The other functions of potassium include maintaining acid-base balance, conduction of nerve impulses, maintaining muscle coordination, maintaining heart function and also blood pressure. Let's discuss about the causes of hyperkalemia. For an easy remembrance, it has been categorized under the mnemonic cardiac D and is as follows. Chronic or acute renal failure. Addison's disease where there is adrenal insufficiency. Rhabdomyolysis. What is rhabdomyolysis? It is a condition where there is breakdown of muscle tissues releasing a damaging protein. This damaging protein is called myoglobin which can cause damage to the kidneys and lead to hyperkalemia. Next will be drugs like potassium sparing diuretics, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, NSAIDs and other potassium supplements. The other causes include intake of excessive potassium supplements, acidosis that is metabolic or respiratory or diabetic ketoacidosis, cellular destruction in case of burns or chromatic injury, diabetes when uncontrolled. What happens in diabetes is patients with diabetes often have diminished kidney capacity to excrete potassium into urine. The combination of potassium shift outside cells and diminished urine potassium excretion can lead to hyperkalemia. The other cause may be dehydration. Let's look into the clinical manifestations of hyperkalemia system-wise. Cardiovascular symptom includes bradycardia, hypotension, slow, weak, irregular pulse rate, ventricular dysrhythmias. ECG changes of hyperkalemic patients show flat P waves, prolonged PR intervals, widened QRS complexes, tall peaked T waves. Tall peaked T waves is the most important ECG change of hyperkalemic cases and it is also an important point from exam point of view. Respiratory symptoms include respiratory muscle weakness. Neuromuscular changes include skeletal muscle weakness, paresthesias that is numbness and tingling sensation, muscle twitches, irritability. Gastrointestinal symptoms include increased motility or hyperactive bowel sound, nausea, diarrhea, abdominal cramping. Laboratory findings may show increased serum potassium level more than 5 milli equivalent per liter, ECG changes. Arterial blood gas analysis may reveal both a metabolic and a respiratory acidosis. Hyperkalemia management includes identifying and treating the underlying cause of hyperkalemia, which may be diarrhea, vomiting, drugs, diabetes, etc. The management includes potassium restriction, calcium gluconate or calcium chloride administration, Administration of IV glucose with insulin and sodium bicarbonate. This has already been discussed in one of our videos about the antidotes. The next management will be administration of sodium polystyrene sulfonate. This will promote gastrointestinal sodium absorption and potassium excretion. The other management is 
For mild to moderate cases, loop diuretics are administered, beta adrenergic agonists such as albuterol, dialysis, and blood transfusion. Nursing management of hyperkalemia includes monitoring vital signs, monitoring level of consciousness, monitoring heart rate, rhythm, ECG tracing, monitoring electrolyte levels at frequent interval, encouraging deep breathing and coughing exercises and range of motion exercises, ABG monitoring, administering nebulization and medication as per the doctor's order, monitoring intake and output. The main nursing diagnosis for hyperkalemia patient is risk for electrolyte imbalance, hyperkalemia may be related to diarrhea, acid-base imbalance, renal failure and drugs like NSAIDs. This is all about hyperkalemia and its management and the nursing responsibilities. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.